This tutorial once again forms part of a two-part series in which we're going to learn how to create bellows. If you're at all familiar with my contraptions and e-carts, you'll know that I like to work with bellows and pneumatic objects in general on a regular basis. This is because they often present you with unexpected challenges and I love a challenge, but furthermore, they also look absolutely superb when animated. Let's have a look at what we've got on the screen. Over here, I've got a loft nerbs object, which I've named bellows, and within it, 11 circles. The first 10 circles I've named or numbered 0 to 9, and there's a very good reason for this which you'll discover later, and circle number 11 I've named controller. I'll just deactivate the bellows here, the loft nerbs object, and we'll change views, and then we can have a quick look at how the circles are arranged. Each of the objects is 20 meters above the one beneath it. The even numbered circles and the controller have a radius of 100 meters and the odds a radius of 95 meters. So that's the initial state of our circles. We'll just change views back to the main view and then reactivate our bellows object. So how do we go about animating this? Well, let's open the Expresso editor. The first thing we need to do is drag in our bellows object. And at the output stage, we're going to set it up with an object port. We now need to bring in a couple of new nodes, the first of which is an iterator. And this is a hierarchy, so we'll come down to the bottom here and select hierarchy, and there it is. Initially, it just has the one output port here, the object output, and we need to mirror this at the input stage, so we'll do that. And the next thing to do is wire the output from the bellows into the input there. The other new node is an object index. So we'll navigate our menus and select it. And there we have it. Just arrange that there. Over on the left hand side at the input stage, it has an instance port. And at the output stage, it has an instance port and an index port. And this is another example of a node that cannot be modified in any way. You can neither add more ports nor take any away. The next step in our expression is to plug the hierarchy's object output here into the input of the object index. And what we're actually doing here is getting the circles from the bellows object and passing them to the hierarchy. And we'll have a quick look at this and we'll look at the parameters. And in the start path we have a D. In the iteration path we have an N. And what this means is that we go down one level of the hierarchy. So in other words, the top of the hierarchy is the bellows. So we're going down one level and we're looking at the circles and then we look at the next object in the list. So we keep on doing this, we go right down to the bottom of the list, and then it loops round and it keeps on doing this ad infinitum, and it does it at great speed. So that's how the hierarchy actually works. And we are able to modify the start and iteration paths down here, but don't worry about this at the moment, this setup is fine. We also have an exclude box down here, and this is useful, because we need to exclude the controller. So we'll drag and drop that in, and now the controller doesn't form part of the iterated group. That's going to be important. The reason we're using the object index node is because it enables us to take an object from the hierarchy here and turn that object into a number. And we can then return that number as an index value at the output stage. The circles have index values between 0 and 9. Now you can see why I've named them the way I have. And remember, the controller has been excluded, so it doesn't form part of the iterated group, and its index won't be returned. To quickly recap, we've used the object index node to turn our circles into numbers, and we've done so by taking the circles from the bellows object and feeding these into the hierarchy. Our next step is to bring in a math node. So we'll bring up our menus and select Calculate Math. And we'll set this up as a divide and we're going to wire the index output port of the object index into the input 1 of the math node. And now we're feeding a value between 0 and 9 into the math divide in a continuous loop. And we're going to divide whichever of those values happens to be in the math divide node at any given time by 10 as we have 10 circles. We're creating a factor because what we have to do is make each circle travel at a speed and distance relative to the one above it. It's like gear ratios. And as you'll see in a moment, it's all based on the height of the controller. So we've got it that far. The next thing we need to do is bring in another math node, which will be a multiply. Just bring that one in there. And we'll plug the output from the divide into the input one of the math node. And we'll just change it to a multiply. 
and we're not going to put anything in input 2 because we're going to bring in the controller and we're going to set it up with position Y at the output stage here and plug that into the second input of our math multiply. So now we're getting the object index which is a number between 0 and 9. We're dividing it by 10 to create a factor and then multiplying this result by the height of the controller. This will cause each circle to travel at a speed and distance relative to the one above it. Having completed all of this, we've now reached the final stage of this part of the expression. We're going to drag in the bellows again, give it an object port, give it a position Y, and just make it a little bigger there. The bellows we then have to drag into itself from the first bellows there. And then we connect the output of our math multiply into the position Y of our bellows. And that doesn't work because we've done it wrong. And what I actually should have done was taken the object from the hierarchy there and placed that in there. Now if we move our bellows object back down to zero, just make sure I've got it there. And that one was a genuine mistake, I'm only human. And now if we select our controller and move it, everything works perfectly. And it looks quite nice, doesn't it? The only thing that isn't finished on it is what I'm going to show you in the second part of this tutorial. In order to make the bellows more dynamic, we need to make the odd numbered circles expand and contract as the bellows is moved. So when it's moving down, we need them to contract. And when we move it upwards, we need them to expand. This will make the bellows considerably more realistic. So that's our task outlined for part two. We'll have one last recap. We took our bellows object and dragged that in first. We connected the bellows to an iteration node called a hierarchy, which enables us to select our first 10 circles, one after the other, in a continuous loop and exclude the controller. It then passes the circles one at a time into the object index and we're returning the index values which are numbers between 0 and 9. We're dividing these by 10. We then multiply these factors by position Y of our controller which then creates a ratio so that each circle moves at the correct speed and distance relative to the one above it which is finally achieved by taking the output of the math multiply and passing it to the position Y of each individual circle as it's returned to the bellows object via the hierarchy, which is why everything synchronizes and gives us the perfect movement. And it's great, we're able to use the controller to make the bellows actually work because we excluded it. That concludes part one of this tutorial. In part two, we'll take things a stage further and make our bellows more dynamic. I'll see you there very shortly.